In this video, we are going to see a new feature of Entity Framework Core 7, and that is Bulk Delete and Bulk Update. The idea is that, historically, Entity Framework Core has been pretty inefficient in making bulk operations. Now that has changed in Entity Framework Core 7, let's see that. Here we have a simple .NET 7 application, this is a console application, we have here an entity, the person entity, and also we have this repository here, which has this utility method that will allow us to bulk insert a lot of records in the people table. We also have Entity Framework Core Server Configure, we have this application DB context, we have Unconfiguring, we are using SQL Server and we are also logging to the console so that way we can see the queries that Entity Framework Core creates. And we are also configuring the people table. Now let's get started, let's see an example. Let me initialize the DB context, so using var context equal to new application DB context and if I want to delete everything from a table, now I can just use a function called execute delete. So context, let's say context people execute delete. With execute delete, we are able to do a bulk delete over our table. We can filter, we can filter if we want, we can say where and do some filtering here, but we are going to do that in just a moment. For now, I just want to clear up our table. So let me press Ctrl F5 to run our application, and we are going to see in the console the query that Entity Framework Core creates. As you can see here, we have this query delete from people without a where, but as you can see, what we did was to emit this query to our database. This is basically what this new feature does. It allows us to emit this query directly into the database instead of having to load the entities in memory before deleting them as it was the case before. So now let me press escape, let me close here and let's do an example. Let me instantiate my repo, so new person repository. I will bulk insert a few records. So let me say here, so let me say here quantity of people. 1000. So I will leave this here so that every time we run our example, we get a clean table. After that, I will say repo bulk insert quantity of people semicolon here. And now after that, I want to clear the console just so that we don't have too many queries in the console. And now let's do what we did here, but filtered. We only want to delete those people that has the delete me column as true in the table. So if we go back to person, we're going to see that here we have delete me. And here what I'm doing is that I am putting this as true for every other record. So we're going to delete half the records. So let's come here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say context people where I will use a filter. I will say p p dot delete me. And then I will say execute delete. It is the same as we had before, but in this case, we're applying a filter. Now let me put a breakpoint here so that we can stop the execution of the program before this line runs. So let me press F5 to run our application in debugging mode. And here we are. Before I execute this line, I want to go to SQL Server Management Studio. I want to query our people table. And as you can see, we have name one, name two, name three, and those names that have a even number are marked as delete me so that what we're going to do is that we're going to delete those records. So now let me come here and let me press F10 and then we can see two things. The first one is that here in the console we have delete from people where delete me is equal to one. And if we go back here, we're going to see that if I press F5 to run the query, now we only have name 1, name 3, name 5. So as you can see, those that had an even number in their name have been deleted. So as you can see, we can indeed filter using this where function that we have here. Now we're not limited to only do bulk delete, we also can do a bulk update. In a bulk update, as its name implies, we can update several records without loading them in memory. So what we're going to do is that we're going to update the name of the records. I want to add some text at the end of the name and also I want to update this update date column that we have here. So let's do that. Let me come back here and what we're going to do is that I'm going to initialize a variable 
update date, date time, now, and then after that, I will say context people. I can use a where if I want to, if I need to filter, but in our case, we don't need that. So I will just say execute update. And in execute update, I need to say the following. I will say C set property. And then I will say, first I will start with the update date property. So I will say P of person, P update date, comma. This is where I put what property I want to update. And after that, I put the value. So the value that I want to use is update date, which is this variable that we have here. The reason why we're using a lambda expression is that we're allowed to reuse whatever value we have in any other column. For example, let me say here, let me put this in another line so that you can visualize everything better. I will say set property again because I want to update a second column. I will say p dot name. I want to update the name column and I want to say p dot name. As you can see, I can reuse the name value and then I can add update it and then I can close this parenthesis and then I can put a semicolon here and that's actually it. With this, we're good to go. With this, we are updating two columns in a bulk manner. So let me put a breakpoint here. Let me press F5. Now, as you can see, we are here. Let me go back to SQL Server. As you can see, before running the bulk update, we have name one and we also have the default date for this column. But if I press F10 here and we run this operation, Again, we can see two things. The first one is that we have this update command here in which we're saying name equal to name concatenated with updated and also update date is equal to this variable that we have here, which is this variable that we have here. And also the second thing is that we can come here, press F5 and here we have name one updated, name three updated and so on. And the same goes for the update date column. So as you can see, we can use bulk update and bulk delete to do bulking operations. I measure the difference between deleting 100,000 records with the old way and with the new way, with the new execute delete method. And the difference was 10 to one, which means that the new way was 10 times faster. If you want to learn more about Entity Framework Core, please buy my Udemy course today so that you can learn from zero. Also, I have courses in SP.NET Core with Angular and SP.NET Core with React, among others. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.